Welcome to Franklin, Oregon, one of the many places we'll visit today as we explore Midwest Oregon. On this trip, we'll try to see everything we can from Corvallis and south. We're starting at Newport, where we'll see Nye Beach, Yakina Bay State Park, the Undersea Gardens, Ripley's Believe It or Not, and the Wax Museum. Then in South Beach, we'll see the Oregon Coast Aquarium and Hatfield Marine Science Center. Then South Beach State Park and Campground, Lost Creek State Park, on a Beach State Park, Seal Rock Wayside, Driftwood Beach State Park, Bayview, Oceana Beach, and Waldport. Let this be your vacation as you ride along with us and explore Western Oregon. We'll try not to miss any town or place of interest. In fact, we'll spend a little extra time at each interesting place along the way so you can enjoy being here too. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. But rather a shy, intelligent creature, and the master of his world. The octopi's eight arms are covered with 1,600 suction cups. Each one of these suction cups can be manipulated independently. The octopus has a backup, a backup means of movement and enters jet propulsion. By flooding the mantle cavity and forcing water through the siphon, the octopus can escape from danger up to 20 miles an hour. As a master of disguise, it can change both its color and texture to blend with its surroundings. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Boy, look at that speed. <laughs> Put on a show here. Wow. I'll tell you now, that is a one fast bird. That's pretty unusual. You're a ham. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no worries about me. I can do right by myself. Yeah, you're good, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's time. There's a little jacket on the car. I know, a little yellow banana. Okay, I think we're going to... Like when you close it. It's like there's a tentacle on the top of this. The University of Oregon Hatfield Science Center.
The map shows a town called Anna, a mile east of here, which was an Indian word for clam. It had a post office in 1890, the same as Seal Rock. Next, we'll go east from Waldport on a very curvy Highway 34 to Little Albany, Tidewater, Salmonberry Campground, Alsea, Alsea Falls, Glenbrook, Alpine, Monroe, Bell Fountain, William Finley National Wildlife Reserve, Greenberry, Corvallis, and Philomath. Leaving Waldport and going east, the first town you come to is Little Albany, then the deserted town of Tidewater. When we get to Alsea, we'll go inside the general store and look around. Then over the mountain on a narrow curvy road to Alpine. After zigzagging to a few other places, we'll come to Philomath where we'll end our second journey.
On our third journey, we'll visit Tangent, Shedd, Fayetteville, Peoria, Halsey, Harrisburg, Brownsville, Crawfordsville, Holly, Kalapuya, Dollar, Mabel, Shotgun Creek Recreation Area, Windling, Marcola, Mohawk, Springfield, Glenwood, and Eugene. Welcome to Halsey, Oregon. This is one of the many towns that's been bypassed by the freeway, but it's a very interesting place.
Wendling was a lumber town in 1899, the post office was right in front of this old house. If you explore through the trees, you'll find the foundations where several houses once stood. This was once a very busy place with a railroad to haul off all the lumber. Today there's hardly a trace of the town left, except for the concrete vault where the general store once stood. The fourth trip today goes through Coburg, Lancaster, Junction City, Cheshire, Low Pass, Horton, Blatchley, Triangle Lake, Greenleaf, Deadwood, and Robinson Railroad Park. Every year, on the last weekend in June, there are 52 miles of yard sales from Cheshire to Mapleton on Highway 36. We just happened to make this trip on one of the sale days, so we stopped to look at several sales along the way. Most towns along this route have one big central yard sale like this one at Cheshire. You'll see more signs all along this highway.
How did you get this railroad started? Or It's kind of a hobby, right? Well, I was a brakeman conductor for 16 years for Southern Pacific. Okay. And uh, I decided to resign, and it took me five years to be able to resign from the railroad because of the security. And oh. when I did resign, I had already collected 13,000 pounds of rail. So I knew I was going to have my own railroad someplace. Oh. So that's how I got started. And I moved 13,000 pounds of rail uh, seven times, and it took me 30 years to find the right piece of property. Well, this is about the most beautiful place in all of Oregon, I think. I don't know how you ever found it. <laughs> it sure is. Huh. The little gas engine down here, I did a koi pond for a guy, and he bought all the materials, and I bought a lawnmower and, and uh, all the materials, and we did a trade. I built him a koi pond, and he built me an engine. And oh. that's what we built the railroad with. The other one. You're talking about that little bitty one down there, the, right. the toy? Okay. That's a 16 or a 14 and a half horsepower MTD riding lawnmower oh. on wheels. Our uh, steam engine is, I basically designed our railroad for uh -huh. Bird's steam engine. Okay. And then I got uh, another steam engine. It's in the roundhouse in the, the Brooklyn Roundhouse in Portland right now, being regaged. And uh, Doyle McCormick, the same man that's uh, running the 4449, is in charge of that project. Oh, okay. Uh, and then this other diesel I got from a man named uh, uh, Lynn Mosier in Philomath. And when I found it, it had been sitting for 22 years outside. Oh my! <laughs> and so it took me, uh, it took me uh, uh, six years to talk him out of it. I mean, he's a millionaire. And, you know, oh, so he didn't want to get rid of you, even though it just no, he sitting, built it. Huh? He built it himself at his mill, and uh, you know, you build something like that, you got a lot of pride and everything in it. Oh. But it took me six years to convince him that I would totally restore it, and uh, as you can see, I did. Yeah. And uh, I put a couple thousand into it, and he didn't sell it to me. He basically gave it to me. My. And uh, so that's my main engine. Okay, that's the one you use most of the time, but on special yeah. occasions like today. This takes you're... an hour and a half to fire up the steam engine. My oh. diesel takes a switch, a click of a toggle switch. You know? <laughs> Quite a difference. Yeah. Come back again next time and let's see some more of Oregon's really interesting back roads. Mm -hmm.